Okay, so I'm going to talk about two of my favorite things, uh, lean startup principles and social good organizations. So what do we mean when we say lean? Um, I think, you know, oftentimes a lot of people come up to me and they say, I run really lean, I'm doing so much for no money and I have all volunteers and that's amazing, uh, but that's not totally what we're talking about when we're talking about lean. Um, so the old definition was really having no money, doing more with less, and the new definition is really about starting small, it's about getting user feedback, it's about creating something that users and the people that um, you're serving really want. Um, and then after you, know, you get a lot of feedback, you can change directions. And the main goals are you know, reduce waste, reduce effort, and reduce money. And obviously, you guys all know this came from um, Eric Ries, Lean Startup. But before that, that came from Lean Manufacturing. And I think what's really amazing about what's happening now is that you know, now there's Lean for civics. There's Lean branding. This, this set of principles can be used for so many things because there's so much value. And I'm obviously really excited that the social good world um, is so excited about this. So the old way that it used to work for startups, I'm just going to run through this really quickly. You'd have an idea. You'd go into stealth mode. You wouldn't tell anybody about it. You'd spend 18 months building a product. You'd raise some money. Um, and then you'd finally uh, launch it to the world, right? And then at that point is when you'd get the feedback. And obviously, most of the time, it failed. And so obviously, for social good, this would look a little different. This would be around uh, you know, products or service. You would sort of spend time saying, like, OK, I think this is what people want. You'd launch it at the end. You'd get the feedback. And so the new way is really about, uh, you know, have an idea, you create a minimum viable product, which I know is a term you're going to hear a lot today, um, and then you, you literally release it into the world as soon as you can. Um, Eric Reese gets quoted for this quote, but it's actually um, the LinkedIn founder who said, if you're not embarrassed of your first MVP, you waited too long. So you need to be embarrassed um, by what you're sending out into the world. And so now it's really about this cycle that looks a lot more circular, the learn, build, measure. So why should you care about this, right? Why should social, the world of social good care? Um, three main reasons, right? We're all trying to save time. Um, we all want to save money. We're you know, resource strapped a lot of times. A lot of us have to fundraise and then do the work. So we're actually, you can actually run lean experiments for two parts, right? The people that you're serving and the funders. A lot of times those people aren't the same people. And really in social good, what's unique is that we're dealing with human lives a lot of the times, right? We're trying to create impact. Um, and so I think it's even more important, these principles, to make sure that we're on the right track and we're not creating solutions that actually don't solve the problems we're trying to solve. So Lean Impact, we created the Lean Guide, A to Z, and we sort of walk through um, all the definitions, and then we give you a few social good um, examples, right? Because it's all about the stories. A lot of times people come to us and say, I'm a homeless nonprofit. I don't, Lean Startup doesn't speak to me. And so we've actually spent time going uh, in, across the country, really, and getting stories um, from different parts of the social sector. So I'm just going to walk through three key, con three key concepts. Um, MVP, get out of the building, and pivot. M is for a minimum viable product. This always makes me think of like C is for cookie. You guys remember that? I'm dating myself. Um, so minimum viable product, product, again, it's the minimum thing you can put in the hands. It shouldn't be pretty. It should be a very manual. Um, and what's really important to know is it's about testing your assumptions. A lot of times we think, um, I do a lot of branding work too, and oftentimes people think, you know, we're in the target audience. Like, I, I don't like this design, and I'm in it, but it's just, it's different when you go in front of someone and you ask them, what do you think? And you see their body language, and then you also, the next step is putting that minimum valid product in their hands, and I promise you, things will change. Um, I spend a lot of times hating on five-year plans, five-year strategic plans, because the second you put the five-year plan into someone's hands, it changes. Um, and I think that's it's something we could sort of learn from Lean Startup. Um, so I'll just walk you through a quick example. Lesbians Who Tech is a community that I started about over a year ago. And the main problem we were trying to solve is that in the gay world, uh, you go to a gay event, it's mostly men. You go to a tech event, it's mostly men. And guess what? When you go to an LGBT tech event, it's like 95% men. I'd literally be the only woman in the room in times. And I wanted more value. I thought the community wanted more value. I, I, my big assumption was that there were more lesbians in tech. And so basically, uh, we made an Eventbrite. We created a Facebook page. Um, and that was our MVP. And we started hosting monthly happy hours in San Francisco. And quickly after, we had like 25 people the first time. By the third event, we had 150. Um, six months later, we actually had, I think, 1,500 people. And then people in other cities started to email me. Um, and we're a little over a year. This is us, and uh, this is our website launch party. We didn't have a website until nine months later. 
because we really wanted to make sure that the community wanted value, that there's something they wanted and that we were doing it in the right way. And so a year later, we had our first ever Lesbian to Tech Summit last a week ago. Um, 800 queer women and the people who love them, which, I mean, totally blew my mind. I expected like 400 people. But the point here is I never, a year and a half ago, would have never said, oh, what lesbians in tech really want is a summit. Like that just wouldn't have been what I sort of set off to do if I made a strategic plan. But through the process of creating an MVP and getting feedback, I was able to figure out people really want a professional experience, something that's not just at a bar, drinks. They really wanted that um, you know, intimate connection for people. So G is for getting out of the building. Um, this is a really cool Steve Blank, great quote. No facts exist inside the building, only opinions. Um, and again, this is just around, we all have these assumptions and it's so important to test because I promise you, once you start testing it, it will change over time. Um, what it's not is online surveys, phone calls, you know, asking your friends, would you use this? That is, that is not getting outside of the building. Some of that stuff can be useful. I think we should all do follow-up surveys to make sure people are liking what we're doing, but it's, it's not getting outside the building. You literally have to see your customer face-to-face. Um, IDU.org, which I'm sure you guys uh, know of, they did a really cool financial service project in Mexico, and what they did was so awesome. They literally built a cardboard ATM, which you can kind of see in the picture, um, and then they took an iPad, put it behind the cardboard, and they actually just mocked up designs. So then they literally sat down with people and like walked through the designs, and literally that's how they figured out what people liked, what features made sense, which ones they needed to change, and they'd actually text people do, you know, just SMS manually at the point that that should have been automatic when they built the software. Um, but they really, that changed their whole product because they sat down and they just created a minimum viable product, literally like cutting out cardboard. Um, the other sort of secondary definition that you might hear around getting outside the building, I mean, you're already at South by Southwest, so you're already doing it. Um, oftentimes, you know, I have clients who are legal nonprofits and they're like, they'll call up the other legal nonprofit and say, what database are you using? Or, they really want their website to look as cool as, as the legal nonprofit website in you know, 2009. I'm like, that's already outdated. You know, sort of think outside the box. Um, you know, look at other websites. Go to startup events. Go to tech events. Read blogs outside of your industry. It's really important. Sometimes those are you know, when the best ideas come. P is for pivot. So obviously, this is sort of after you create the MVP. You get feedback, and you say, OK, this isn't working. This isn't what people want. We should actually switch directions. Um, I'll tell you a little story. So Lean Impact, we, you know, we started this community. I read the book Lean Startup a couple years ago. I thought, oh my God, we really need to take this to the social sector. Will people find value in this? Is this something people want? Well, um, and so we basically decided our MVP was a telesummit. We charged $20. We got speakers, people who are um, you know, implementing Lean Startup principles in their organization. And I think we spent three months and we sold two tickets. So it was a... Um, Major fail, which is where the hashtag's coming. Um, and you know, it really gave us, though, um, a lot of interesting feedback. So I spent a lot of time talking to the people that I thought would be interested in it. And what I found out is that you know, the education bar is super high. Like A lot of people hadn't read Lean Startup. There's no way someone's going to pay $20 to go to an online experience, um, because they really didn't understand the value that I was, I was trying to sell. Um, and so then we pivoted. And we actually decided to do a series of uh, three launch parties in DC, San Francisco, and New York, free events. We had over 600 people register for each of them. We had 300 people walk through the door. We had 50 people apply to speak. And that's really where the key sort of aha moment went. Oh, like people need to hear the stories. You know, don't really understand leads. I kind of get it in theory, like MVP, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they really needed um, was the stories. And so that led us to a second pivot. We decided, OK. People are interested, people are excited, but is there a revenue model here? Is this sustainable? And so we needed to figure out something with a price point after we already invested a little bit of uh, money in the launch parties. And so we said, let's take the magic of the half-day summit, or of the launch parties, and do a half-day summit. You know, keep ticket prices low, still low barrier to entry, um, and ask people to apply to speak. And I think we've had over 1,000 people apply to speak between our three different summits. We sold out in San Francisco, we almost sold out in New York, and then we're in DC on uh, March 26th. So, you know, now it's clear that you know, people are willing to pay for value, but um, we're still sort of in the early part of this, so we'll be doing actually a lot more uh, feedback with people. The three big takeaways, this is really less risky. Um, a lot of questions that we get are around funding. You know, how do I talk to my funder about using Lean Startup principles? Like, I just applied for a grant, and now I'm gonna switch directions. Like, that doesn't feel like they'll be totally into that. Um, but really, you know, when you talk to funders, it, 
If you talk to them early and often about what's going on, if you can save money and time to figure out what the solution should be earlier than spending a year raising money and sort of, you know, then finding out the end you made the wrong choice, there's, it's less risky. Um, and, you know, while nothing's totally easy, there's resources out there, and it's really around starting small. I mean, big institutions like GuideStar and TechSoup are implementing these in small teams and small team projects, so you don't have to be a six-person social good startup to do lean. Um, and I think the most powerful thing for me is that uh, it gives you the data you need to make a decision on how to move forward. While I'm a big data geek, I, I, I don't think it's possible to measure all of social good, so I you know, always try to tell people, well, data is important and you need a baseline, you'll never be able to measure all the impact you have, ever. Um, but it's really important, Lean Startup is so cool because you can do these mini experiments to let you figure out how to move forward. Like I said, Lean Impacts, I would not have chosen to do a half-day summit when we first started out a year ago. That evolved over a year's time because we kept getting user feedback. Um, there's a lot of tools out there. I mean, everyone should read the book. Um, there's a lot of online courses on Udemy. If you go to leanimpact.org, we have a bunch of guides and courses. Um, and we're actually starting to develop, um, you know, now that we know uh, the market is somewhat there and this can be somewhat sustainable, we're actually creating an intro course. And then we're going to do a six-week sort of challenge to people to run experiments, either individually or with your team. Um, so you can go to leanimpact.org slash challenge. Um, and again, our summit is in D.C. on March 26. So if you have any questions, I'm around. I'm at Leap. Well, well, not the right slide deck. Leap hits. Thank you. <laughs>